Voice AI platforms like Vapi, Synthflow, and Bland.ai are good for getting you started, but they come with their trade-offs, and honestly, I've regretted using them for use cases in the past. I've talked to businesses before that have specifically switched from Vapi to a custom solution because you run into problems with these tools. You don't run your own infrastructure, your tool calls are slow, you're paying per minute rates that are premium, and it's really hard to truly customize your agents. When it comes down to it, I respect these platforms for being easy to use and pretty powerful overall, but it is just a big black box. Luckily though, LiveKit is different. LiveKit is an open source Python framework for building your agents with code. So it gives you full customization control over your conversation logic, direct integrations with your tools and MCP servers, and you can actually self-host everything or deploy your agents to the LiveKit cloud. It's fast, it's reliable, it's very scalable, and I know you're probably thinking it's gonna be a lot more complex than something like Vapi or Bland, but it actually isn't. It's really easy to build agents with LiveKit, and that's what I'm gonna show you super quickly in this video, how easy it is to get started building simple agents where you can customize your tools and the different models for text-to-speech and speech-to-text. I'll show you how you can build a voice agent locally and then even deploy it to the cloud and interact with it in our browser. So this GitHub repository that we're looking at right here, I will have linked in the description. It is a great place to get started, and a lot of what I'm gonna be guiding you through today is based on the examples that they have here. So we have have this first quick start and then also scrolling down they have a lot of different examples you can explore the different kinds of voice agents that we can build with live kits so they got a basic starter one that can deal with the background audio like having that play as the agent is talking dynamic tool creation building an outbound caller and they have a lot of cool integrations with things like twilio we have MCP support, I'll show you that later as well. Video avatars, there's so many things that they offer. But right now, I want to cover building the most basic version of a live kit agent. Then we'll build on top of that over time so we can see how to really customize it. Building the kind of thing that we aren't going to be able to do with an out of the box tool like Bland, Vapi, or Synthflow. So I will have this repository linked in the description as well. This is where we'll be building the agents live that I have for you today. What you can take as a foundation and build on top of to create really anything that you want. And if you want to read through this whole readme, I've got setup instructions for everything. But right now, I just wanna dive right in and build with you. So let's open up our first basic agent. I'm gonna actually create this section by section from scratch to show you how easy it is. The first thing we need to do in Python is import all the dependencies that we have from LiveKit. You can see some different providers here for part of our voice pipeline. More on that in a little bit. We're gonna load our environment variables, including things like our OpenAI API key. And then we're going to create a agent class. So we're calling it assistant. It's based on the agent class that we're importing from LiveKit. Everything that we build going forward is gonna be within this assistant class. And so we create up our agent, and then we use this class to connect to LiveKit, either self-hosted or in the cloud. And I'll show you at the end of this guide as well. And so first we have our init function, and this is where we get to specify the system prompt for our voice agent. I'm just keeping it very, very basic here. And then we have our entry point. So this is what is called when we are trying to use our agent for the first time, when a user calls into it, however we are invoking it. And so we create what is called an agent session. And there's a lot of different parameters that we can set here to tweak our agent. A few of the most important ones that I have here is all about creating what is called the voice pipeline. Because the way that it works with LiveKit is you have your speech to text model that sits at the front and then it goes to the large language model. So whatever speech it transcribes into text, it goes to the LLM to get the response. And then the response goes through a text-to-speech model so that we have the voice come out the other end for us as the end user. And there are also voice-to-voice -voice options with the OpenAI Real-Time API, for example. So there's quite a few different things that you can set up in the live kit. If you wanted to use Anthropic for the LLM instead, or Cartesia for speech to text, there's a lot of different providers that are available if you want to check that out in the LiveKit documentation. But this is our session where we define our voice pipeline. And now we get to start the session. So in the entry point, we're invoking our agent. Now we're starting the session, creating a room. This is where we maintain the conversation history between the user and the voice agent. And we're just passing in our agent because obviously that's what we want to use for this room session. 
And then the other thing that we're going to do is generate an initial greeting. And so at any point in our agent code, we're able to generate replies. That's one of the more customizable components we have to LiveKit that we don't have with something else. Like in our Python code, anywhere we want, we can just inject it to say something based on the instructions that we give it. And so when we kick off the session, the user doesn't actually have to be the first one to talk. We can have it generate something. And so we're telling it at a high level, like this is literally just a prompt to an LLM basically. We're telling it to greet the user warmly in some way. And you can tweak this however you want. And then this is the very last thing that we have to do. All we have to do when we start this script here, the live kit basic agent.py, is we're calling the CLI.run app. And then we're passing in this entry point where we have the whole agent session and room and greeting set up. That is it. 52 lines of code. Congratulations. You've already created your first live kit agent. It is that easy. And so let's test it out right now. Then I'll show you how you can start to really add in the fun stuff. All right. So back over to the readme because I have instructions for running everything. If it is your first time executing this live kit agent, you do need to download the model files for it. I already have that run. So I'm going to go right to running the console command. So whenever we invoke a live kit agent through a Python script, there's a few different options that we have as these commands that we have as just like the last argument here. Console is how we get to use our agent in the command line. So let's go ahead and run this and listen to this conversation here. I'll even start by giving us a greeting. So here we go. Hi there. How can I assist you today? Hey, in five words, tell me what is so cool about LiveKit. Scalable, real-time, open-source video. All right. It sounds really, really good. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this here. Things are working perfectly. So that is our super basic test. There's nothing fancy with our voice agent at this point because we haven't given it anything special through tools. So now let's go ahead and add a tool to our agent and watch this because if you blink, you're going to miss it. There we go. All right. We have now added a tool to our live kit agent. It is as easy as creating any Python function and then adding the at function underscore tool decorator. So when we create a function within the agent class, like I said, everything we're adding is just within the agent class here. And we add this decorator, we're telling the live kit agent, here is a capability that you have and the doc string, this comment that we have at the top of the function is going to tell the agent when and how to use this tool. So we can do things like specify the arguments that we have here. So it's exactly the same as when we add tools into our agents with Pydantic AI or Crew AI. It works in just the same way. LiveKit really is just another AI agent framework, but for building voice agents in particular. It's very, very cool. And so this function is just a basic one in general to get the current date and time because large language models due to their training cutoff don't actually have that by default. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this agent, go back over to my terminal and let's invoke it again. And this time ask it what the current time is. Can you tell me what the current time is, please? Current time is 421 PM on October 3rd, 2025. Is there any all right, that is looking really good. And you can see that it used the get current date and time function, just like we have defined in our Python code. And then just for fun, let's add a couple more tools to this agent. So I'm going to turn it into an Airbnb assistant that can help me with searching and booking. And so to keep it simple, I'll have mock data for a bunch of available Airbnbs, and then I'll create one tool to search for Airbnbs. And so the parameter here is the city that we're searching in. So the LLM will actually decide this parameter when it decides to invoke the search Airbnbs tool. And we specify the arguments in this doc string as well, because that is included as a part of the prompt to our live kit agent. And again, this is just using a bunch of mock data here. And then I'll just add another tool so that we can actually book the Airbnb. And if any of these arguments, it doesn't actually know yet from our conversation, then it will clarify with us. So cool. I'm going to go ahead and save this, go back over into our terminal and let's invoke our agent for the third time. Hi, welcome. How can I assist you with your Airbnb plans today? All right, tell me the Would top Airbnb in San Francisco really quickly here. Here are three top Airbnbs in San Francisco. One, Cozy Downtown Loft, $150 per night. Okay, cool. I am sold on the Cozy Downtown Loft already. I want to go ahead and book that right now. Great choice. Could you please provide thee with your name and the check-in and check-out dates cool, for your yeah, stay? My name is Cole. At I'll go ahead and check in on November 1st and I'll check out on December 30th. Your booking for the cozy downtown loft from November 1st to December 30th is confirmed, Cole. All right. You'll get a Let's go. Cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. 
looking really good. So there we go. We have some mock data here for Airbnb. So it's not really a voice agent that's doing something for us, but if we were really using the Airbnb API, this would be a super solid voice agent that can help us find our Airbnbs. Pretty cool. Now, I thought it would be fun to actually show you using the real Airbnb API in the live kit agent. This is a bit off the cuff, so I'm not gonna dive super deep into this right now. I do actually have a video coming out next week on the Docker MCP catalog, so check that out. Stay tuned for that, because that's how we're going to get quick access to the Airbnb MCP server. And so this won't actually book an Airbnb for us. I wanna be really clear on that. It's probably a good thing. We don't want our agent to book on our behalf, but it's actually real search, finding real Airbnbs for me now, instead of using the mock data. So I've got this added to my servers here, and then I am running the MCP gateway from Docker so that I have this ready to be connected to from my live kit agent. And I'm gonna be covering all of this in the Wednesday video on the Docker MCP catalog. So again, stay tuned for that. So it's running the streamable HTTP protocol on port 8089. So you'll see, given that, how we connect to it in LiveKit in just a little bit here. So I have a second agent where I have this MCP integration. And there are some differences between this script and the last basic agent, even besides the MCP stuff. I was just playing around with more features in LiveKit, just showing you some things like we can fire off certain events within the whole conversation flow. Like when the user starts speaking or stops speaking, we can have custom logic built in. So just trying to give you a little bit of an idea of how we can continue to extend and customize LiveKit agents even more. Like it definitely is a lot more you can, than what you can do with other platforms like Vapi. And then we have the MCP servers. Literally all we have to do, it's so easy. We have our agent session here defined in pretty much the same way with our whole voice pipeline. And then all I have to do is add the MCP servers. This is just a list of all the servers that I want to connect to. So we have streamable HTTP for the Docker MCP gateway that I have running. And all I have to do, because this is just running locally, there's no authentication, I just have to give the URL to my MCP server. It is that easy. And then boom, this agent is now connected. Let's go ahead and run it and use the real Airbnb API. All right, back in the terminal, let's run a very similar command, but this time for our MCP agent instead of our basic one. Hello, how can I assist you today? Uh, I want you to search for Airbnbs around Minneapolis, Minnesota that I can book for this week. Just give me the top one really quickly here. The top Airbnb listing in Minneapolis for this week is a studio in historic Brownstone, downtown MPLS. It has one bedroom with one queen bed, a rating of 4.79. Right, really, really good. Cool. I'm going to stop it here. So perfect. We are now using a real Airbnb API call to get that Airbnb. So cool. That's everything that I have for you for building LiveKit agents. It really is easy and powerful. And the last thing that I want to show you is how we can take our LiveKit agent that we've been running locally and actually deploy it to the cloud. So we can interact with it in the browser. And I'll even speak to how you can set up a phone integration so you can actually have a phone number with your LiveKit agent behind it. Now, before we get into that, the last thing that I wanna say as far as building agents and the tools that we have for this, there's a workshop that I did in the Dynamis community where I built a more advanced live kit agent, also with the help of Archon, that has a complete rag implementation behind it. And so definitely come check out dynamis.ai if you're interested in workshops like this. The recording for this is available for you immediately when you join the community. And there's a ton of other resources that we have in here for building AI agents and working with AI coding assistance. So I just wanna mention that really quick because I have already covered LiveKit in the Dynamis community. But with that, let's go ahead and take our basic agent that we have here and now deploy it to the cloud. Now I've got custom instructions in the readme to make the deployment to the cloud as simple as possible. But it is all based on the voice AI quick start that we have here in the live kit docs. This is a little bit more complex because it assumes you don't have an agent yet. We already have one. So that's why I have my own instructions for you. And so following this, we can either deploy to the LiveKit cloud, which is what we're gonna be doing just because it's the fastest and most convenient, but you can also self-host because LiveKit is free, open source. You can run all of the infrastructure if you want complete control for your voice agents. Now, LiveKit is not sponsoring this video or anything. I just wanna to deploy to my cloud platform here because it is the easiest to show you how to get started. And so you can host your first agent completely for free. I'm not paying for anything for LiveKit or for DeepGram in this video. Literally just my OpenAI API key is the only thing that I have to pay a single cent for. 
So that's what we've got going on here. Going back to the readme here, let's go down to the instructions that I've got once we actually want to do our deployment. And so first thing you have to sign up, create your LiveKit Cloud account. I got the link right here. And then you have to install the LiveKit CLI. So based on your operating system, there's a different command. I'm on Windows, and so in my terminal, I've already run this winget command. And then you need to authenticate with the LiveKit Cloud. So you just run LK Cloud Auth. So all of our CLI commands with LiveKit now is just gonna be the LK command. And so it'll walk you through authenticating in the browser, and then you'll be good to go. Now, the next thing that you need to do is set up your environments. And this is where I'll actually go and show you running these commands alongside. So I'll go in here, minimize this a little bit, and I will do LK app env w. What this is going to do is we just enter in all of the different environment variables that I have in the .env.example for you. So we specify our OpenAI API key, we specify our DeepGram API key, and then the large language model that we want to use for that part of our voice pipeline, and then just a couple of development settings. And so the LiveKit command will actually recognize the values we have in the .env.example, and it'll set all of those with us. And then these three at the top for our LiveKit authentication, it actually does that automatically under the hood because we already did our authentication. And so I'm going to set these values off camera. Like you can see, I just like set this and then I set my deep current API key. I'll set all of these off camera and I'll come back once that is done. All right, all my environment variables are entered. We are good to go. This will create a .env .local file. Just make sure that you rename it to .env. And then moving on, the next thing that we can do is start our agent. So we have to run the start command first before we can run the deploy command because this sets up some configuration under the hood. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command, go back into my terminal here and execute it. There we go. And so once we run this start and it loads everything, then we can immediately exit out here. So just control or command C to exit out in the terminal. And then we can go to create our agent. So last time back into our terminal here, I deleted my previous agent because on the free tier I can only have one. So I'll do LK agent create. There we go. So it'll have us use the org that we authenticated with. We can select our .env file for our secrets and we'll select the agent that we want to deploy, which I'm gonna do the basic agent in this case with just all the mock tool calls because we can't use the MCP server remotely. And there we go. Now it's gonna go ahead and create the Docker file and deploy everything to the LiveKit cloud and will be immediately usable for us. So I'll pause and come back again once we have that ready to go. All right, our agent is now deployed and we can also see it within our cloud dashboard as well. And now going into our playground, which I'll link to this in the description as well, we can immediately test talking to our LiveKit agent in the browser. So we just have to select our organization and it automatically connects us to the agent that we just deployed through the CLI. Take a look at this. I can assist you with Airbnb related yeah, requests. Yeah, go ahead and find me the top Airbnb in San Francisco. The top Airbnbs in San Francisco are 1. Cozy Downtown Loft all right, 150. Well, we go ahead and stop it here. We obviously got the same answer that we did running things locally. So we now have our agent pretty much in a production environment. And you can't even go so far as to take advantage of their telephony integration so you can have a phone number for your agent. And that really is the end goal for most voice agents. Not gonna cover it here, but let me know if you'd want me to do a separate video covering this integration for LiveKit, really taking it further. There's a lot of other things that I could cover as well, like multi-agent workflows within LiveKit, advanced tool integrations, so many more ideas that I have. So let me know in the comments what you'd want me to cover for LiveKit next. I definitely wanna do more content for LiveKit kit because I'm just blown away. Everything we're able to build so easily and customize things because it is all Python code. So if you appreciate this video and you're looking forward to more things on voice agents and AI agents in general, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next video.